ngayong hapon, mga ka-street by from south to north, Davao City to Cagayan de Oro and anywhere in between. Good afternoon to all of our street by users, all of our street by merchants. Maayong hapon sa atong tanan nga supporters. Um, this is a free webinar and it is open to all. Even if you're not a street buy user, even if you're not a street buy merchant, feel free to join us today. My name is Sherry Ann Liangoy, co-founder and COO of Street Buy, and I am your host for this webinar. So for today's topic, um, we will be talking about a few things, but our main topic is workplace health and well, well, wellness in the age of COVID-19. So um, very, very important. And this webinar is brought to us by um, Street by SME1. So with that being said, what is SME1? This program is designed by Street by to help the SME community bounce back. So kung SM, SME, we are referring to our small, medium enterprises. And as your uh, biggest supporter, as your partner, um, Street by definitely want to make sure that na ami maika ambag sa community during this time of the pandemic. So with that being said, as we know, um, the SME sector has definitely been hit big time uh, because of the crisis that we are facing right now. So we understand what you're going through. We know what are the struggles that you're going through. We know what are the challenges from declining sales to, um, you know, trying to think how can we do our marketing in this new normal and even the safety of our employees. So Street Buy brings you SME1. And you might be wondering, what is um, the difference? Uh, Miss CA, if I am a Street Buy merchant already, unsay kalahian sa atong regular merchants and to our SME1 merchants. There's really only two things that are different, guys. Um, it's still the same thing. Our customers get to enjoy our platform. Our merchants also get to use all the features that we have in our platform. But the two biggest difference is that number one, um, this is for our customers na nagatawag, nagatawag diretso sa atong mga tindahan. And they are asking you if you actually deliver. And if you don't have a delivery uh, fleet, you can use the Street by SME1 platform to process the order for them. Kamo mismo ang mag order through the app for your customers. And the second thing that is different is that as a, as a Street by SME1 merchant, walay commission si Street by. So your profit margin is buo, no? So um, street buy is not going to take any piece of the pie. We won't be taking any commission from your profit margin. And that is one of our way um, to truly support the community, especially the SME community during this time of the pandemic. The other thing is that we want to share with you that um, we have some SME1 um, merchants and they are already enjoying a 47% increase in their total transactions. So if you are a um, street buy merchant and you haven't really signed up for our SME1, make sure you reach out to your account manager so we can sign you up. By the way, speaking of account managers, I want to say hi to our account managers. Uh, we want to say hi to our street buy riders. Sa atong tanang kahuban sa street buy all over Mindanao, maayong hapon. Thank you so much for all the work that you do for us. And we're truly excited to bring you SME1. No, So uh, let's continue. SME1, by the way, is not just a program to help um, the merchants in terms of the platform 
and also in terms of um, not getting commission from your profit margin, SME1, um, with this program, we offer different webinars that are intended for the community that's intended for our SMEs so that you get to maneuver um, in this new normal. So when you think about um, the different webinars that we offer, we have different topics from finance, sales and marketing, management, and so much more. Um, today's topic is very important, like what I said earlier, uh, because we, as we know, um, you know, there's a lot of challenges right now. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that we are not familiar as we embrace this new normal. So with that being said, we actually have different speakers for today and they will be talking about very related topics and before I give it to our first speaker, I just kind of want to share with you, um, you know, some of the things that I found out, some of the research that I've done before this webinar. And it's very, very um, staggering, you know. So um, when you look at the pandemic right now, it's, it's truly, truly changing um, our behaviors. It's truly changing how we do business. And it is very clear that we don't have a playbook Wala tay manual, wala tay instructional book that gives us a step-by-step -step guide on how we do business during this time of the pandemic. Especially for entrepreneurs, for business owners, we are in an uncharted waters for sure. And because of the pandemic, many are forced to work from home, right? Um, daghan tang mga kaubanan that are working from home and our business or our personal and our professional work are starting to collide. The two worlds are starting to collide. And um, based on the research that uh, was done by Josh Berlin, um, they are saying that the top four issues that's on the mind of the employees are as follows. The first one is financial security. Second is health and well-being. And that, by the way, is going to be our topic for today. Um, the third issue that's on their mind is family. And last but not the least, the fourth one is productivity and work. And um, with that being said, our first speaker, um, you know, I'd like to uh, get the insight of our first speaker. And with that, I want to introduce our first speaker. I'm truly, truly excited to have Dr. Mary Rachel Wapano with us today. Um, Dr. Wapano earned her doctorate at um, Ateneo de Manila University for Clinical Psycholo uh, Psychology. She's also the Associate Prof Professor of OIC, uh, Dean of Graduate School in Ateneo de Cagayan University. And... Um, we are very, very, um, you know, we're very excited and pleased to have Dr. Mary on the on the um, webinar with us. Dr. Mary, are you on? Good afternoon, Miss Cherry. Okay, Good thank after you for having me. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, feel free, Dr. Mary, if you could share some of your insight, that would be great. Uh, thank you for having me here for today. I th uh, good afternoon also to your viewers. Uh, I'm a street by you, sir. Uh, so that's why I readily agreed uh, to uh, to be in this webinar. So on my insights on uh, the pandemic, the mental wellness of the of your merchants of SME of SME in the in the pandemic is that uh, to invest uh, to invest in the mental wellness of our of our employees is not really cannot be thought of really as uh, an expense, but we can think of it as an investment. So if we invest in the mental wellness of the emotional wellness of the well-being of our employees, uh, it will improve their uh, productivity, it will increase their morale, it will reduce stress, and they have a chance to balance their uh, work and their life. So again, um, for, uh, for employee wellness, in, uh, employee wellness programs can, can also be thought as an investment uh, and not really, and can be, 
can be expensive, but it can be an investment in their well-being. Well, thank you so much for sharing that insight, Doctor. And I believe you did prepare a short presentation for us. So I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, that way you can go through your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Okay, for uh, today, may I just share something about mental wellness in the age of the pandemic among uh, SME, small business, small, medium enterprises. So for mental wellness, may I just say that in the definition, because I'm a teacher, uh, we define mental wellness as a state of well-being uh, where, we, uh, where we realize our abilities, our potentials, where you can cope with, your, uh, with our stresses in our lives, where we can be productive and can be fruitful and we make contribution to the community. Uh, but for this, uh, for this presentation, I invite you to, uh, to play a game. If we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, if we can move to the next slide, please. Okay, so for our viewers in, on Facebook and on different platforms, uh, if you have a sheet of paper, may I invite you to do this game. So this is a psychological game of sorts, and it will, uh, in a way, tell us uh, our level of mental wellness or well-being. So for this game, very simple, uh, using a single circle and any number of triangles and squares, may I ask you to draw a design on the blank uh, space of the paper that you currently have. So again, for this game, we want to look at your mental wellness, your mental balance or well-being. So again, the very, uh, very simple instruction is to use a single circle and any number of triangles and squares. So draw a design on the blank on the space of the paper that you currently have. So you have, uh, you have some time. Okay. okay, if you are done, uh, may we move to the next slide, please? Okay, so what we did is just a simple psychological game because again, my background is in psychology and in psychology, there are, uh, there, is a, there is a psychology of symbols of sorts. So what we know is that symbols uh, communicate is our, is our language, is the language of the unconscious. So let us try to interpret your drawing. So sa psychology, kay mura ni o ka nang, say kuha ko be. Okay, so say kuhon na ko ka. Okay, let us try to look at uh, our drawing if you have any. Okay, let us try to interpret. The next slide, please. Okay, so in the drawing that you have or may not have, uh, in this exercise, the triangles may represent the work that you have, the business that you have, the current position that you have, the responsibilities that you have. Okay, the squares that you have drawn uh, can stand for the organization that you belong to. Uh, and the lone circle represents the symbol of yourself. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, let us try to interpret your triangles. So your triangles, yes, please, click, please. Okay, the triangles, uh, it is important to look at the number and the sizes of the triangles. So the number, are they many, very few? Okay, or the sizes, are they small, medium, or large? So the, click please. Okay, so the next, uh, the number of triangles, the large triangles that you have, if your triangles are very large, that is if you have drawn this drawing, uh, the large triangles tells us, uh, tell us that your, you place importance to the work that you do now. If your triangles, if your triangles are very large, the job that you do right now, your business, your functions, your responsibilities are very important to you right now. Okay. Uh, if you are, if you have many triangles, like uh, more than five or more than six in your drawing. Okay. Next, uh, click please. Okay. It may also suggest. It may suggest that 
uh, it may suggest that you are working on many projects at once. So even if you have this uh, small business, there's another business on the side, probably another business on the side, or maybe you are doing you're doing uh, online studies on the other side. So again, the triangles tell us of your of the work that you do. One large triangle suggests the importance that you place on the work that you currently do. Okay. So again, uh, for the next slide, the interpretation for the squares, because a square is a box, okay, it tells us about your organization or the sense of belonging. Okay, so a sense of belonging. So uh, if you have, we, all, we again look at the number of uh, squares and the number of, uh, the, and the sizes of the squares. Uh, click please. So the squares tells us about your organization, okay, your job, the organization, your business, even your family, uh, the organization, whether uh, physical organization or online organization. So if you use very large squares, it could mean that you feel boxed in uh, because you are, there, there could be uh, some pressure to conform. Uh, but if you have, next please. Uh, if you have uh, many squares uh, in your drawing, it could be that there are so many responsibilities left and right, uh, front and back sides of your life. So our squares may represent our organizations, our family, the groups we belong to, and the, the pressures that they uh, entail. Okay. And the lone circle in the next slide, please. Uh, the lone circle uh, in the next slide, please, represents uh, yourself, ourself. So if you have drawn a very big circle, it could suggest a strong positive self-regard, and that's very good. But if we have drawn a very small circle in relation to your squares, in relation to your rectangles, it could uh, suggest that at this point in your life, uh, maybe you see yourself as, as small in relation to the many responsibilities, to the many pressures, to the job that you currently do. Okay. And again, for our last slide, for the last few slides, okay, next please, we look at the connection among the, the, the drawing. So if we see a connection, if the circle touches a square, if a square touches a triangle, it suggests integration and harmony. Uh, integration and harmony uh, among our among our uh, among the shapes very important because it suggests balance and again we go back to the idea that mental wellness wellness or well-being is a state of balance uh, next slide please okay so again what i'm trying to say here uh, in this presentation is that our uh, the there's the, the interconnection between yourself and our sense of belonging and responsibilities and uh, the purpose and the work that we do when they are inter interconnected if there is integration again tells us a sense of well-being uh, or balance okay. next slide please and all of these uh, again leads us to uh, our purpose uh, that is sometimes the integ what, what integrates all of these, the purpose, our work, our sense of belonging is our purpose. And one question to answer uh, uh, what, what our purpose is, is simple is a simple question from a famous, uh, a famous ad. And again, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that what we know, what, how we can know what our purpose is, is to simply ask the question in the next slide. Okay, and the next, and the question is, para kanino ka bumabangon? Uh, every day, para kanino ka bumabangon? For your family, for your employees, uh, for your uh, customers, for your clients. And that could be the purpose that we have in our lives. Okay, so again, uh, for the last slide, for the very last slide, um, mental wellness, again, is a sense of balance. Balance of self, a uh, strong sense of self balance of work, uh, balance with uh, love and the people we belong to. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this very short presentation. I'm happy to be here. All right, so Doc, um, this is what I have. I have a 
triangle um, inside my square <laughs> and both of them are inside my circle. <laughs> Thank you very much for participating, Miss Cherry. I'm happy that you did. Okay, participate. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, that was very insightful. Um, you know, as as I think about um, wellness of the employees of the SMEs, um, usahay siguro makalimta nato. We think it's just you know um, it's just something that we take for granted, but um, we we tend to ignore nga grabe ang pressure karon no dagan ka ayo pressure. Um, and, and, kanang, ang ako ang question siguro, Doc, um, when I think about, uh, I, I was in the U.S. for a few years, and when I think about, even before the pandemic, employee wellness programs have, have been a big part of big companies, and um, they really make it important, you know, they spend yeah. time in talking to their employees, um, it's really embedded in the corporate culture. Uh, here in the Philippines, what are your thoughts? Have we truly embraced this already? Um, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Mom Sherry, for that question. Huh? And and my answer to that it is that to a large extent, uh, I think yes, uh, we have embedded that in our culture to a certain extent. That my uh, my answer to that question is really. Uh, is, is yes. And I can uh, speak from where I am uh, in Savior that is very strongly embedded in our organization. Uh, and because we are a Jesuit university, our wellness is uh, centered in, uh, in our spirituality, spiritual formation. But uh, really it is embedded in uh, most organizations because uh, my guess is that uh, wellness programs in the organizations have very have recognized advantages. Um, so there are so many advantages of embedding employee wellness in organizations. And of course, the very first one is reduced cost in healthcare. Kaya gamay na lang man magsakit, di man kaya sila magsakit, kaya ge-exercise man sila. Uh, increased morale. Kaya when, when we have wellness programs in our uh, organizations, it tells us that the employers are uh, the employers care for their uh, employees not only on the not only for the profits but because our employers uh, care for our well-being as well yeah and, and uh, i think they you know they don't just do the minimum they can go yeah. above and beyond when they feel that the company cares for them yes i agree, I agree. Yeah. so um you know i i'm i'm a graduate of ateneo de davao university as well so oh. it kind of brings me back as to you know how the jesuit community is so um thank you for sharing that doc and um i kind of want to go to my next question and by okay. the way to our viewers right there out there um you know you can write your comment uh, or your question in the comment box and uh we'll be sure to answer them as well okay um so here's my second question which is very related to what you mentioned earlier um there are some research that shows companies are actually treating treating their employees better than ever karon sa panahon sa pandemic they're really protecting their uh, workers and um when you look at the bigger companies i think they have the money to spend um, now the SMEs, they might not have a lot of budget for this. Um, why do you think it's important for the SMEs to benchmark and maybe replicate it in their own way? Okay, thank you again, uh, Miss Cherry. And again, I I agree with you that our uh, our employers, organizations, they become kinder. Uh, you said they treat us better. They treat their employees better. And I think better can also be translated as kinder. They become kinder to uh, the employees. And I think what the pandemic uh, brought us, the lesson that pandemic uh, taught us, is to be kinder, not only as in the individual level, but also in the organizational level. Uh, so on your question, why is it important for SMEs to benchmark um, uh, and to replicate the, repl replicate the other uh, models in their own way? And I think because it is just humane, it is just kind uh, to, be, to take care of the people who work for us. Um, 
So again, it is important to benchmark again because we, it is just humane, it is just kind, it is uh, just compassionate to do so. Uh, but again, uh, may I debate a little on the on the on the on the word replicate uh, because sometimes we cannot replicate another organization's uh, uh, parang methods of addressing the pandemic or or replicate another organization's mental wellness or wellness programs because we are as organizations we are also unique. So I think the word is to customize. Uh, that is, our wellness programs can be customized uh, according to the nature of the business that we do, uh, probably according to the demographics of our own employees, and probably also the resources that we have. Uh, for example, uh, again, may I cite Savior, because we are an academic organization, our wellness program is different probably from a manufacturing company. So uh, again, it's very difficult to replicate, uh, but probably we can look at the best practices, uh, but we fit in, we, we get the best uh, features of other uh, programs to, to, to consider as our own. I love that. I love the, the, the word or the term customization, no? So um, I, I, I'm going to actually take that. I'm going to, um, I, I'm going to benchmark that for street buy. And, um, you know, sometimes when I look at my co-founders, uh, many of us have a corporate background and most of the best practices that we have come from bigger companies, right? But the, the key there is we have to customize. Um, our startup employees are different from, you know, our corporate employees. So, Doc, I, I definitely learned something new today and, and uh, I'm going to take that back and, um, you know, apply that in our organization. You think it is cherry. Yes, and then um, the other thing is that you mentioned it, right? So customize. There's a perception out there that it's expensive, that wellness programs are expensive. And when you think of SMEs, there's always this word or uh, the, the term like, you know, we're on a budget. That term is always kind of butang sa SME, no? So um, what are some of your suggestions on, on, you know, the simple little ways that they might be able to implement right away without spending a lot? Okay, uh, and again, thank you for that question. And uh, Ms. Cherry, probably you, you are asking about the recommendation in what way? And I think uh, the, the my recommendation or one way to do that is to do a paradigm shift, uh, to look at things differently. Uh, because sometimes our, again, um, I, I, I may have mentioned already that sometimes we look at the wellness programs from the point of view of the employers. They may see it as, a, as an expense. Like for example, in Xavier, we have Zumba. Uh, and we pay our instructor 500 per hour, MWF, TTH, and that is an expense on the part of Xavier. So it can be seen from the point of view of employers as an expense. But really, it can also be seen from the same point of view. It can be seen as an investment uh, in employees' uh, employees' well-being. And we know that if uh, employees' well-being are addressed, uh, if they are taken care of, the, the productivity will increase. Their their stress will 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 uh, their stress will re will be reduced. Uh, there will be reduced cost of health care. Morale will all will also be increased. So it can be it is an investment uh, in a sense. Uh, it is an investment in a sense, and the results are tangible. Um, so I think again, it can be it can be it can be uh, seen from a different light. As uh, Amos Adanhi kay kanang, you said the concrete practical applications. Kung siguro sa atong mga SMEs kay mong, kung mangutan na ganita, kung kinsa ang maayo mo sayaw, na ginay mag-volunteer. So basin siya ang pwede mag-zumba. Kung mangutan na ta sa atong small organizations, kinsa ang maayo mo kanta, kinsa ang ganahan mo kanta, bisag ang kanta dili ganahan niya. Uh, so kanang... <laughs> <laughs> so kanang... Siyang pwede na ito magamit sa, siyang pwede uh, siguro ang magdala sa mga karaoke. We have 
for our wellness programs, we don't have to go to, for example, to Xavier. We don't have to hire the trainers from Manila. But maybe probably they are there in your own organizations and need to be recognized. Um, I, I, I think the key term there is investment. Uh, you've mentioned uh, you've mentioned investment multiple times, and um, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, the, if number one, they're gonna have fun if you're gonna assign somebody to do it. Yeah. Number two, um, you know, their immune system's gonna be stronger and it's much better. So gamay na lang siguro ang mag-absent kay magkasadili na magkasakit, right? So I'm good. I I love how we're looking at it from an investment rather than an expense. So, um, doctor, thank you so much for your time. We will come back to you. Um, so far, wala pa tay question from the audience, but we will bring you back later um, with along with the other um, uh, speakers. Okay, thank you, Miss Sherry. I'm happy to be here. Congratulations on this webinar. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So moving on, um, before I uh, move on and introduce our next speaker, um, I want to share this uh, quick graph with um, our audience. You know, um, this is a uh, research done by NRCP or um, what we call National Research Council of the Philippines. And their re this research project was led by Dr. Maria Cecilia Gastardo Conaco, and she is a member of NRCP, member of Social Science Division. They did a, a survey and um, worried and afraid were the top feelings generated in the self-report of feelings across events of the pandemic. So maudoni ang duha ka pinakatap na mga feelings na gi um, respond gi respond sa ato ang mga ilahang mga na survey. So with this, um, Dr. Conaco also revealed that the other feelings, cognitions, behaviors of Filipinos during the COVID-19 pandemic um ilaha ng gi tanaw and um, the others include being um, anxious and um, with kaninga nga research, it made me think about, you know, um, what are the different wellness, what are the different um, things that we can do so that uh, we can relieve the feeling of being anxious, the feeling of being worried. And um, with that, we have our second speaker, um, Miss Julie Eng. I'm going to introduce Miss Julie Eng really quick. Um, Miss Eng uh, became the first certified Philippine based instructor in 2008 of the Art of Living Foundation. The Art of Living is one of the world's largest volunteer based nonprofit educational and humanitarian organization found in 1981 by Sri Ravi Shankar and they uh, they operate in 156 countries. Um, Miss Julie Ang is also a board member of the Art of Living Humanitarian Arm, the International Association of Human Values Philippine uh, chapter. And um, she's also a certified 200 Vensaya Yoga teacher with the International Yoga Alliance, um, a certified Rainbow Kids Yoga, and um, she is based in Cagayan de Oro. She is um, the owner of One Yoga Wellness in CDO. And Miss um, Julie Eng, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, Miss Julie. Uh, hi, How are you? Hello. I'm good. Thank you so much. It's an honor and grateful that I'm here in your show. And my daughters are actually your client also, street bike. 
Thank you so much, Paul, for being here. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very timely. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, before we go through some of the questions, because Gabi, the ganja go gisulat kagabi ino. I'm I'm excited to hear and and um, how we can help our viewers out there. But I'm gonna give you the floor, Miss Julie, so that you can give us your quick presentation. All right. No, I I I guess I I have a slide that I I prepared, but then it would be, I would love this session to be interactive. So, okay, can we just put all us? Uh, Turn off the slide. No more slide first. What what I want to talk about now is there is a misconception of yoga because yoga we think yoga is just the physical exercise, the physical poses, but actually that is only just one of the eight in yoga. So that is the physical aspect and then but we are made of our mind, our intellect, our memory, our ego and our self. And the one that I will talk about this afternoon is I want to ask you this thing that that is happening right now all we need to do is to lift up our energy, to make our energy high. What do I mean by that? Because when we lift our energy high, if you look at yourself, what happens? When your energy is high, your mind is also clear. You feel good about yourself. Your body is strong and energetic, isn't it? And when your energy is low, you feel uh, you're getting sick. And not only that, your emotion, your mind is clattered. So when we lift our energy, everything, the problem seems to be solved. My next question to all of you is, where do we get this energy then? If it is like just putting gasoline on a car and the car can run, then where do we get our gasoline as human beings? So first thing that would come to our mind for sure is food, right? But you know, in food, there is a fine line between being a medicine that will nourish you versus it will also make you sick or a poison. So the proper kind of food that you put in your body is very important. I will not talk much about that now because you can Google it. But one thing is when you eat something that is heavy to digest, that means your internal organ is doing double time to digest the food. So in a way, the energy is being consumed by just digesting the food. Second, sleep. You notice that when you lack sleep, you get cranky and your mind is not clear. And when you have too much of sleep, the same thing, isn't it? You feel lethargic. So there has to be a balance of rest and activity. But what happens right now is when we have too much work, we sacrifice our rest. Yes, for the meantime, it's like a car running on an empty uh, tank, but after a while, it will break down. And that is the time when it is much expensive to heal the body. Third is a, having a calm, meditative mind. You notice that when your mind is so full of negativity, like you're thinking of the future, anxiety, uh, thinking of the past, guilt, anger, and all this emotion, it is the number one the one that brings your energy down. You notice that? And so you have to be careful of the things that you watch, the things that you listen to, the, 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 the space that you are in, the activities that you do, because they have an effect on your energy. Now, 
the last thing is what you did when you came into this world. You took a breath in, isn't it? And after taking a breath in, there are so many millions of breaths, which is your life, until you leave this earth, and that will be taking a breath out. Now, this four basic energies that we get. First, how many days can you live without eating? Some, perhaps a month, you can still live. Second, sleep, how many days without sleep that you can still function? Third, with a very disturbed mind before one will jump off the building, how many days, years, months, and last one, breath. How many seconds without breath will you live? Yeah? So you see that breath is so powerful in bringing the energy high. So you, it's really up to you to manipulate your energy, isn't it? So here, I will give you a tool to manage your energy. We don't think about breath, you know, like being conscious about it, that it's going into the nostril and out of the nostril. Same thing as when you have a headache, when you're feeling the headache, then that's the time you're conscious of your head, right? But we are given by nature the capacity to take in more life force, our life but we are only using 30% of it. So we are living 30% of our lives. So do you know one thing really interesting about this breath? Why am I talking about breath when we are talking about yoga? Because yoga is the physical aspect of yoga, of the body. And then our mind is something that we don't see at all. And it's so hard to manage our mind because the nature of our mind is in the past, future, past, future, isn't it? But to bring the mind to right here, right now, the present moment is through the breath. What emotions do we have when we look at the future like you were talking a while ago about worries of the business where will i get uh, finances what will happen to the future of the children and then all these things brings you down and when the mind also would be in the past oh so glorifying the past like Mabuti na lang, wala yung COVID-19 before. Life was different and it was uh, uh, better. Or you have feelings of anger. Oh, somebody told me this. Somebody uh, made me feel this way. And this event that happened to my life. So you have regrets. You have uh, sadness, jealousy, envy, all these things that is clouding, that is taking away the joy, the clarity, the focus, the enthusiasm of what we have now. Actually, there's so many things that we are grateful for. Maybe we have appreciated what it is to be in our family, to be... Uh, to be not running after the things that we used to run before. So, but then these are clouded because of the noises of the future and the past, the future and the past in our minds. So we will use the tool, the rhythm of the breath to make your mind clear of all these noises. So one thing about interesting about the breath, because it's linked to our mind, to our thoughts, and it is linked to our emotions. You will notice when you are fearful, the rhythm of the breath is different. 
it is heavy, it is dense. And there are certain parts in the body that you feel where it is affected. Maybe heavy on the chest and something happening on the stomach. So it is closely linked that when you also breathe in a different rhythm, like for example, the rhythm of peace, the rhythm of relaxation, the, pre the breathing of joy, you will get the same result. So that is how a powerful breathing techniques in yoga. And then that is a way to how to manage the mind, which is so hard to manage. You notice that when there is too much thoughts in the mind and you said, this is enough, I cannot take this anymore, I will think positive, but two seconds pass and then that same thought would arise in the mind, isn't it? And then when you want to go to sleep, you cannot sleep because of all these things bothering you. The first thing that would come when you wake up is the same thought that you had when you were about to sleep. So in yoga, there is a union of the body and the mind, which is you cannot see, which is hard to manage, which is everywhere. And the link to bring that mind to right here, right now, is the breath. See, the breath is free. It's, it's just how you skillfully use the breath for your own health. See, we, we say that we want to be uh, self-care. We only know self-care probably of the physical way, the physical body. But who rules the body? It is our mind. It is our emotion. So using the breath will clear up the noises, the, the emotions also in our body and in our uh, feelings. So we become more clear. So if you are owner of businesses, it would be best to teach these breathing techniques to your employees because you will uplift them and they will be more uh, fruitful to the company. So uh, you asked if it is expensive or not to doctora, breath is free. Okay, so I think that's all my presentation right now. Miss Julie Ang, um, yes. parang uh, guilty ako sa madaming sinabi mo kanina, no? Um, <laughs> as, as an entrepreneur, um, as a leader of the organization, daghan kag nasulti that I'm like, oh my God. Yes, I take for granted. I take my eating for for granted. Um, I, I take my lunches a little bit later, and then I would, um, you know, I, I would burn both ends of the candle. I'd wake up super early. I would sleep really late, and all I can think about is, okay, I have these many tasks. I need to complete them. What's gonna happen if I don't do them? But you're absolutely right. There are times where I'm like, okay, why am I cranky? Right, and it's probably because I uh, lack of sleep. Um, so I hope our uh, SMEs, our partner merchants, are listening out there. And um, the things that Miss Julie Ang shared, they're not really big changes. It's just um, small tweaks to our um, lifestyle as entrepreneurs, as business owners, and. Um, Thank you for that. I, it feels like, you know, somebody kind of, um, you know, woke me up and said, hey, wake up. You need to, you know, maybe recalibrate your lifestyle. Um, with that being said, Miss Julie Ang, I, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, the first one is that, you know, um, based on the, the what's on the news, the graphs and the research that I've shared earlier, there's really a lot of emphasis on self-care right now. Um, in fact, many may say that, you know, work is more flexible 
because many of us can work from home. There are a lot of different benefits that the company are giving. So why, why should we, you know, why should we really put importance on self care when in fact we can work from home? Okay, I want to tell you, so I, I want to ask you something or, okay, let's uh, have a situation like this. You've saved a lot of money for this vacation, the, the, your dream vacation, and then you are there now. Of course, I know we cannot travel, but just imagine, and you're there. All the things that you've dreamed of is there, but your mind is somewhere else. So see, and then your mind is still where? you were so see my point is self-care is not just you know like what you see from the eyes like you're flexible you're in your house you're comfortable no because there's something much more than self-care we brush our teeth we we take a shower we have massage we have all these things but have you taken care of your mind how do you clean your mind how do you clean your emotion yeah so that's it. So it's it's really not just the physical, but it, it's our mental state of being exactly. as well. Exactly. So how do you do it? Do you know that breathing properly takes out 90% of toxins in the cellular level? And this I can you can Google the uh, art of living research. These are all evidence-based studied by harvard yale stanford so we have that if you can you can ask me the link i can give it to you i i will definitely reach out to you after this you know i mean and you said it yourself um it's it's free breathing is free right um but but that kind of leads me to my next question uh miss julian um you have a yoga studio and um you know right now um, there's a big buzz on the, on yoga. We see we see it online. There's virtual yoga, um, but I think there's a misconception um, around yoga. And um, two of the misconceptions that I see most often is that one, it is just for women, daw, no, babae lang daw. Number two is that it's expensive. What can you say okay. about these two misconceptions? Okay, because men are so used to, you know, like uh, weight training and something that is very intensive. And then when they look at yoga, it is soft and, uh, you know, it's like a flow. It's like dancing through life. And then, but then, you know, uh, what is strength is strength when you can control the mind and then you can synchronize your breath with the movement and then what is the point of really uh carrying uh heavy weights or something so intense when you cannot even carry your own body and then so that is a misconception for sure because it is uh, as i have said yoga is not just the physical thing that you are looking at but it is actually a combination of brooding and bringing the mind to the moment because you know a lot of people now that this pandemic uh, came they cannot even close their eyes it's so hard to like just keep still and close the eyes so the power there is how can you control close your eyes and be calm and be centered now the next one is expensive it's the same thing as what doctor was saying a while ago that maybe you need someone to teach you the proper alignment because you will have if, if you don't it's like you know I, I, looking at the window and there's the sun there and the, the the flowers and the plants and you want to get there and you jump out of the window you need to get out of the door past the stairs and then you go out and relish the scenery outside all right so there's a way to get there and i don't think it's really expensive because we spend so much on food and all other things but you know that self-care you were talking about we sh we put it under because we don't see it but actually it is actually uh manipulating our lives yeah 
it's like um, some people um, buy Starbucks or coffee every day or some people buy um, milk tea every day and that's like what 80 to over 100 pesos right if we can afford that why can't we afford a little bit of extra for self-care exactly and that one is why do you take coffee because you want to to you know to be awake but then you can do that with your own breath to be awake naturally and then you take in too much sugar and until you know at the end it will make you sick oh my god miss julie i have to like really listen to this and i'm sure a lot of our um sme a lot of the entrepreneurs, business owners out there, I, I'm sure guilty ta ani, no? Daghan ta na guilty ani. So um, I, I hope that we, we we do really listen to uh, some of the pointers here. Yeah. No, I want to correct that, no? I, my point is like, it's okay to indulge yourself, but if that is the only way to keep you awake and you get uh, uh, addicted to it, then th 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 you have to strike a, a good balance on everything, right? Correct, correct. Um, Miss, Miss Julie, the, the one last question I have for you is that, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of viewers, a lot of um, employees, as well as business owners alike that are really anxious right now with the pandemic. There's a lot of uncertainties. And um, I know you've been, I kind of looked at your page, Facebook page, and, and, and um, you know, I see you offer a lot of classes and you've had this yoga studio for a while now. Would you be able to share with us um, maybe some real life examples of your students, um, you know, some of the benefits that they've gotten from, from your classes? Uh, from my, from the students, of course, we hear them, uh, they're having more calm mind that even with what is happening right now, they can, with a calm mind, you see your decision is better. But when you're, when you react, when you're emotional, then how many times have we regretted our decision? So having this uh, thing that uh, what we were talking about a while ago, that this is only for women. So, Again, I repeat that when you are able to control the mind, then your mind can be centered. And then the decision is much more stronger. So that is also what I hear from our clients, that they are able to sail through this pandemic with a calm mind and accepting. What is the point of not accepting that it, this is happening, right? If you accept it, then half of the problem is solved. Then because you know how to go about it, isn't it? I, I love it. I love it. Um, I do uh, boxing two to three times a week. And, and now I, I really, um, you know, I'm convinced I got to do yoga here pretty soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> Miss Julie, thank you. We're going to um, bring you in later along with the other speakers. Um, sure. Again, thank you. And, and um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. So um, with us also today is uh, Mr. Mark Lester Yu. Mark is based in Singapore. He calls Singapore home, but he has roots and ties here in our beloved Philippines. Uh, he is uh, a talent acquisition manager for Expedia Group, and um, he served as a trusted business partner to senior stakeholders for Expedia, um, loves coffee and an avid gamer, um, a bit of a tech geek as well. Um, you know, Mark, are, are you there? Can you see and hear me? Yes. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm great. And thank you for having me. Yes, yes. Lots of interesting conversation today. And um, from your perspective, especially from a corporate perspective, um, would you be able to share with, uh, with us some of the things that you guys are doing at your organization from a wellness perspective? 
Yes, happy to walk everyone through. So I, I do have uh, my slides ready. So let me just um, make sure that I have them uh, with me. Um, can you see the slides on the screen? Yes. Right, cool. Um, Cherry, can you see the slides? Yeah, the, uh, we can see the slide, Mark. All right, awesome. So thank you everyone for for inviting me here. So I was um, you know asked by Kath to share some of the best practices that we have at Expedia Group in terms of cultivating wellness in the in the workplace. So hopefully you know you will find this sharing session um, insightful and useful. And yeah, so I think Cheryl has really introduced myself. Uh, um, and like what she said, I've been um, my role currently at Expedia is the, is the talent acquisition leader for the APEC region. So I lead a team of 10. Uh, so my team members are anywhere from Greater China all the way to the Pacific region, so ANZ. And um, we find and nurture talents that would raise the bar and fuel our company's growth ambitions. So, um, and yeah, and obviously travel is uh, a passion of mine. <laughs> Needless to say, working for a travel and tech company uh, my favorite countries to visit are Japan and Taiwan, uh, but also have been privileged enough to visit different countries. So in the in the photo here, we have uh, our office in London on the left, uh, the US uh, when I attended a job fair, and our Singapore office on the right. This was also Halloween like two years back. So without further ado, I want to share a bit more um, in terms of like what is Expedia's. Uh, first, I want to talk about the philosophy of Expedia Group in terms of uh, well-being. So at Expedia Group, our first priority is really the health and safety of our employees. So this includes mental health. So we know these are very trying times um, and it can feel surreal, um, baffling and overwhelming at times. It can also be hard to know how to navigate change and uncertainty, let alone come up from the, on the other side with a greater sense of connection, growth and opportunity. However, by having thoughtful and open conversations with one another, we can remove barriers and make speaking about mental health a bit easier. So I think I've, I've, I've put here the a quote from our Chief People Officer Arch, and I think it really encapsulates you know, the principles behind Expedia Group's um, programs, right? So let me share with you how we, how we bring to life uh, this wellness philosophy at Expedia Group. These are some of the programs I will share with you today. So by no means these are exhaustive. So Expedia Group has uh, tons more, but you know, for the for the purpose of this sharing session, I'll just highlight to you the, the, the key ones that I thought would be interesting. So the first one is what we call um, uh, flexible working schedules. So what this means is that uh, being a global organization, uh, we work uh, across uh, multiple countries globally and we work you know, across uh, with each other across different time zones. So we flexibility actually would now in, in the COVID world would mean quite differently, right? It could be working on a different schedule than our usual ones, whether that's starting a bit earlier or a bit later in the day. Um, right now with work from home, you know, there are just some circumstances that you have to wrestle with, for example, you know, taking care of your kids uh, with their homework or sending them to school, um, taking care of your pets, whatever, right? So we encourage our employees to share with their managers and team members when they will be present for meetings, when they need to be offline uh, to take care of their responsibilities at home. Uh, so we also encourage everyone to be more transparent with their managers and with their team members, um, especially if they're struggling or if they, if they need extra support and you know, encourage them to lean in um, to others as well. So aside from that, aside from having that open um, conversations and managers also expected to accommodate uh, these requests, we also have a voluntary reduced work week program. So for, for some people who want to take a bit of um, uh, maybe two, two days a week off um, to spend a bit more time for the family, then that's also possible. There is a reduced work week program available that they can also um, uh, avail uh, through, through this year, right? So that's one example. Um, another one that I want to share is what we call the wellness and travel benefits. So at Expedia Group, Travel is our lifestyle and contributes to our well-being. Um, so in the past, we, we, we used to have uh, these uh, two different buckets. We call it travel and wellness. Essentially, they are reimbursement dollars that anyone can spend every year to claim back for wellness-related items or um, travel-related items, right? So, so essentially, you know, there's a wide range of coverage. So before COVID, you had to claim that separately, but 
because of COVID, not a lot, most of us can travel, so we can't really use our travel benefits to, to travel, right? Because some of us, for example, in Singapore, where we can't go outside of the country, so the company has also um, combined both uh, benefits into one. So that means that our dollars are now combined. So and anyone can can use the maximum amount to claim for either wellness or travel or both. So examples of these would be, like, for example, memberships. It could be gym memberships, rock climbing, marathons, ski tickets, etc. Fitness trackers like Apple Watches. Um, you know, personal training classes for you know for. Uh, music lessons, dance lessons, it could be courses like yoga, pilates, Thai boxing, or equipment, right? It could be bicycle, running shoes, um, clothing, apparel, uh, or IT equipment or monitors for or additional laptops, or it could also be apps that you need for, for your um, well-being. So there's tons of different um, items that employees can claim using these uh, wellness and travel benefits. So the next one I want to share is uh, what we call the Employee Assistance Program or EAP. So at Expedia Group, we believe that asking for help is a sign of strength and courage and not weakness. So managers and the team can only be helpful if they truly understand um, what we're struggling with. So we encourage our teams to be open about the support that they need you know, from their colleagues, from their managers, and align on the expectations for their roles. And if they really, really need extra help, there's also this uh, employee assistance program um, and you know, some of the offerings include coaching and counseling sessions you know, to discuss about feelings of anxiety, depression, or mental health issues, you know, tips, how, can they, how, how they can stay organized, um, coping with stress, communicating with family, or even tackling sleep problems, for example. So there's a, there's a resource available to them 24 by seven um, and access, accessible um, by anyone globally uh, within Expedia Group. So the other one that we also have is like webinar on mindfulness and its impact well-being. So we're also educating everyone in terms of like what is mindfulness, um, you know, why mindfulness, right? Essentially, the, uh, we've engaged a clinical psychologist, um, Catherine uh, Srebiski, to run these sessions. So essentially, it's all about we are able to make the best decisions if we're able to think clearly about a response and have that clarity in our minds, right? So it, it almost felt like a psychology class um, and we discuss about cognitive states and you know understanding um, that mindfulness actually cultivates the ability to disengage from incapacitating worries or detrimental or self-defeating negative thinking and increase the capacity for present moment awareness through simple I think breathing and meditation practices to the previous speakers have also alluded so um, there are classes or um, sessions that anyone can avail and there are techniques for example like making conscious choices, focusing and avoiding multitasking, practicing gratitude, leaving work at work, um, as some examples. So another one I want to share that we do at Expedia Group is what we call our inclusion business groups or IBGs. So IBGs are really um, Expedia Group unique category of employee resource groups that are strategic, self-organized and um, company sponsored. Uh, focus on advancing the vision of inclusion and diversity in the communities that, that we serve through uh, the company. So at Expedia, we are a very strong supporter of inclusion and diversity, and, and, and we know that uh, people from underrepresented communities are even more impacted or the impact of COVID has been amplified in these communities. So we feel that, um, you know, the, the resources like our IBGs are able to help manage and power up uh, mental, uh, mental wellness. And one of these resources is our um, IBG. So they really provide an inclusive community to the different members of our um, workforce as well. So, um, and, you know, these really create a safe environment for every person, regardless of their disability status, ethnicity, sexual orientation, identities, or veteran status. Um, and, and these groups help to ensure that, you know, they, they feel that they are um, heard, um, they, are, they feel safe, empowered, and uh, connected. So lastly, there are other um, virtual health and wellness resources and sessions that are available uh, within the company that employees can, can um, take advantage of or avail. So for example, they are like virtual home workouts, like full body heat sessions, uh, yoga sessions like strata yoga, core power, etc. We also have like virtual tours. So for some of us who really can't cross borders, there are like you know virtual tours that they can, you know, they can take to to take them through virtually 
the different national parks, uh, Great Wall of China, for example, museums. And these are funded by the company. Um, there's also like mental health well-being videos, um, nutrition classes, um, change management um, webinars. We also want to encourage people to, um, you know, have a platform for them to shout out uh, appreciation. I think practicing gratitude is also an important way to support and encourage one another. And interestingly, we've also focused our efforts on including um, kids, right? So we have uh, uh, programs like Junior Journeys. Um, so this, the, for example, Play Zones are, are play-based program. Um, it can be silly games or fun projects that um, Expedia organizes for kids age five to eight. So examples would be like sing along, literacy, literacy times, physical activities. And this week is the theme is in Halloween. Um, so these are intended for children's age five to eight, and there's also a, a session for you know children age nine to twelve as well. So this is also part of us um, um, engaging um, parents as well as their as their kids as well in this uh, in, in these times. So those are some examples, and I probably leave you with um, this quote from Buddha: "With our thoughts, we make the world." I think it's really. Um, um, interesting, right? Especially when we talk about mindfulness and mental health and well-being. So thank you. Hey, Mark. Um, some of the things that you mentioned, um, it kind of brought me back to uh, my days at Verizon. And, and uh, I remember that EAP was one of the most popular ones. Um, another one was similar to what you mentioned, where um, we used to, uh, we had a program where they could kind of um, watch, uh, bring in their kids, and, and you know we had uh, special funds for that as well. Um, uh, when I think about the current situation, um, what are some of the most popular programs, wellness programs that you currently have, and why do you think it's um, you know being utilized the most right now? Right. So I would say that. The top two, I think the first one will probably be the wellness and travel benefit. So I don't have the like the full data right now, but I would say that's really the most popular because looking at just my team as an example, one is because it's funded by the company um, and two, it's accessible and it's very flexible. Uh, there's just a wide array of choices that employees can actually um, choose from. Like the list that I mentioned to you is just a tip of the iceberg, right? There's a whole list of items that employees can claim and the company will, will reimburse uh, those items. So I think that is really highly availed. I, I, everyone in our Expedia has always um, claimed back against that um, pre-COVID. So I'm sure, you know, post-COVID is even um, highly subscribed. The other one would be flexible work arrangements. I think this is also, um, it's, it's, it's really um, important because, you know, I, I have uh, different team members, right? Some of them in different life stages, different um, uh, family composition. So, I've seen this uh, to be also um, widely available because some of them say, oh, we need to pick up my kids after work. So I will be off you know, from four to six, but I'll, I'll come back online from seven to nine, that sort of stuff. So yeah, this is really much practiced. Um, and sometimes we have um, meetings as well. For example, for myself, I, I, I have meetings in the US, uh, which means I have to you know log in at maybe nine or 10 in the evening. So I then probably will have to you know wake up a bit later the next day and log in a bit later. So I think these two are one of the, the ones that are highly um, um, subscribed or highly, uh, the programs that are utilized much uh, at Expedia Group right now. Got it. Um, that's interesting. You mentioned that travel um, is still one of the most populars, uh, or popular. Is that pre-COVID or even right now during the pandemic? Right. So even right now during the pandemic, um, bear in mind that these benefits are global. So markets, for example, like Japan or um, North America, people can travel domestically, right? For example, let's say in the, if you're in the US, you can travel basically from New York to um, Chicago or, you know, and that constitutes as travel. So people can claim their hotel stays or, um, you know, the, their domestic air ticket and will reimburse those. So for example, in Japan, for example, you can travel from Tokyo to Fukuoka or to Papuro, Hokkaido. And that also constitutes a domestic travel, right? So yeah, and people can claim against those if they wish. Love it, I love it. So thank you for explaining that for um, our local viewers. Um, with that, Mark, um, you know, when I think about 
um, the current situation, the new normal. A lot of people are working from home. You've talked about flexible schedule. Um, right now, you know, um, we're kind of in this social isolation. We're dealing with stress and time management. Um, you know, you've shared a lot of different virtual programs for your wellness program. Um, is there anything you could suggest to our small, medium business owners and, and maybe where they can focus their attention? Because the scale, um, you know, might be a little bit different if you compare it to some of the bigger companies. Right. So I would say there isn't really a one size fits all approach. Uh, I, I think uh, Dr. Cello already alluded to this earlier in her talk that um, we should be very careful around, you know, copying or, or replicating other companies' programs, right? Because um, we, we have to bear in mind that um, it's very easy to say, oh, Google's doing this, let's, let's, let's do the same thing, or Expedia's doing that. Like every organization's business circumstances, the playing field, the employee concerns may be different. So I would say a good place to start is to communicate and understand what is it that your employees need to support their well-being. Um, it could be as simple as like, what are the top three or five things that if you can solve, you would remove those blockers and increase productivity and performance, right? If you can afford to find it, then great. And if you can't, would are you able to get creative? For example, can you leverage on local government programs? Or what about your partners? An example at speed that we have done is uh, similar to Street Buy. We're also a platform business, right? So we have partners like the hotel. So what we've done is we've organized what we call EG Academy. So it's like a, a free um, courses, which we invite our partners and their employees to participate for free. So it could be upskilling, it could be um, trainings and all this. It could be brushing up on their CV. On, on it. There's a lot of course that we, we, we offer to them and they could participate and join. So this is also an example. This Currently, this webinar you are sponsoring, right? So it's, I don't think there's any cost to um, your, your partners, but you're able to bring um, thought leaders into this uh, forum. And uh, this sharing session is available to your partners as well. So this these are some examples that they can do. Um, other things that, um, you know, may not cost a lot would be, and again, this may not be a substitute for professional mental health support, but some technique could include um, active listening, um, taking the time to speak to your employees, you know, ask open questions, and most importantly, listen non-judgmentally and without interruption, asking what would help, picking up on verbal and non-verbal messages and signs that something may not be right, uh, being self-aware and appreciating the impact of um, employee communication on the employee, you know, summarizing what's been said and um, following up regularly and constantly reassess the, the situation and your employees um, um, sentiments, right? Um, it seems like that's been really the theme from the first speaker, um, you know, even up to you, Mark, uh, you know, the customization and making sure you start from within asking the organization, asking the employees are on when or where do we need to focus. And I think that the other theme here is that there's a lot of things that we can do that's free. You mentioned active listening, just talking to them and, you know, just, you know, having a, a conversation with no barrier between a boss and an employee. So really, it, it you know, there's a cohesiveness. So um, thank you for reiterating that. Um, I, I know that you have a hard stop. I just want to squeeze in one last question for you, um, you know, for the talent um, acquisition managers out there, HR professionals who are really active and busy right now as we, um, you know, provide support to our employees during the pandemic. What advice do you have for them as they continue to cater to the well-being of employees? Right. Thank you for the question, Sherry. So I would say the HR, um, I think now in, in this climate, there's a lot of leaders who look to us for her guidance and support. Uh, and I think HR is in, is in a position where we can really advocate um, a culture of having thoughtful, open conversations with one another, especially in the workplace. So I think the questions that we need to ask ourselves is like, how can we remove the barriers um, and, make things, and, and make speaking about mental health easier? For example, um, discussing workplace burnout, uh, bringing out in the open. So workplace burnout is often stigmatized you know, due to the association with mental health issues. And this year has really pushed us out of our comfort zones and some of us may be dangerously on on overdrive 
So it's probably worth talking about that um, since it may affect us deeply on a physical and emotional level. So that's one, investing in our people as well. So um, think about what can we do right now that would strengthen our teams to prepare them for the future. So what do I mean by that? Can we reskill and retrain employees to help them be more competitive when the economy stabilizes? So that's the approach has been used by Singapore government before during the last um, recession, right? So they've spent money to really upskill everyone's skills so that because they kind of will it kind of really recover. So by the time it recovers, you're prepared and you have all these new skills that uh, would make you more competitive in the workforce and in, in, in the new um, post COVID environment. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark, for, for taking the time to share with us your insight. Um, I hope you could come back a little bit later um, towards the end. But again, thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Sherry. All right. So I'm going to bring in our next speaker. Um, we also have Cheryl Ordineta here with us. And Cheryl is an internationally certified yoga teacher. Uh, she's currently studying to complete her training in yoga therapy. Um, she also co-founded Breathe Works Davao. This is a virtual yoga studio. And, and she did this right after the, the start of the pandemic. Um, she also spends a good amount of her time on creative pursuits like painting and poetry. I am one of her our regular customers. I love her art. And uh, Cheryl is a good friend of mine. I, I admire her, uh, the work that she's doing. Cheryl, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon. Um, good thanks afternoon. For, thanks for the introduction, Cherry Ann. And I'm so happy to be here. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. So, um, I'm going to talk a bit about, you know, art um, during this pandemic. So let me just pull up my presentation here. All right. Okay. I think I got this. So um, can you see the presentation now? Uh, not yet. Not, not yet. Maybe, maybe our team, um, our, our uh, back end team can help. Can, can mm -hmm. we uh, um, flash Cheryl's uh, presentation? While we're, while we'll pu we're pulling that up, um, I, I know that you've been, I, I know that you've been really busy with um you know school as well as art um man, i really appreciate you taking the time and then spending um you know a few minutes with us actually it's been over an hour so thank you so much for for joining us today Shet. um you know i can't wait to see more of your art i think you're gonna share some of those today right yes um i don't know what's happening um one second, let me, okay, how about that? Let's see. Are you able to see this now? Let's ask our backend team to um, uh, bring in the presentation. So, um, I think they're, I think they're working on it. This is the beauty about being live, no? So while uh, yes. we're working on that, I'm gonna take the time to say, Thank you to um, our Street By team who are always, always open and working really hard to make these webinars happen. No? So this is live and free to uh, not just our Street By uh, users and Street By merchants, but this is open to um, the community. This is one way for us to truly try to help the community bounce back uh, we've done multiple topics already from finance to sales, marketing. If you guys have a suggestion on our next topic, make sure you put it on the comment box. That way we can consider that for next month's webinar. We are um, trying to do this um, at least once a month. Sometimes we're able to do it twice a month. And... Um, 
you know, again, it's not not just open to our merchants and you, uh, uh, street by users. So let's see. I, I can see that our back end team um, is working on this. Let me I might be able to help. All right. So this is yes, indeed. This is the fun of um, doing things live. <laughs> OK, one second. Um, I'm sure it's it should be up any minute uh, now. See. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, Cheryl, take it away. All right, that's great. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a bit about our, the creative therapies for stress reduction in the age of this pandemic, COVID-19. So let me just go to the definition. Um, very simple definition for this one. One second. Mm -hmm. Again, not working at my end. There you go. So what's creative therapy? So creative therapies are based on the premise that when someone works creatively and under the guidance of a qualified therapist, they become more expressive and communicative. So this raises their awareness of issues and brings impetus for change. So I put in brackets the phrases there under the guidance of a qualified therapist because for some this uh for some people this may be this may be the case but for others this this may not be the case so you might need creative therapy just for the sake of you know um um, especially during this pandemic, you might need some sort of distraction from what's happening around you, and therefore you need to engage into something creative, and that can be a form of therapy as well. And then as I move on to the next slide, mm -hmm, I hope that's working. There you go. So here are some examples, traditional examples of creative therapy. So we have their music, of course. And the main idea of using music as a therapist to provide distraction from pain and anxiety. So traditionally, therapists use music for this purpose. Um, and then, of course, we have dance and movement, so for mental and emotional wellness. And the third there, we have art um, for emotional expression, enhanced self-esteem, and management of conflict. So these are the traditional um, tools that they use for creative therapy. But of course, there are other things that we can um, do or that we can use for creative therapy. So on the next slide, mm -hmm. there you go. So other alternatives that are within reach, um, something that you can do right from home, something that you, you know you can do anytime. We have their gardening and we've seen a lot of people um, becoming plantitos and plantitas at the onset of the pandemic because Indeed, you know, gardening can be an art form. You know, the way you arrange your plants at home, the way you pot your plants at home, it requires a bit of creativity. And I, I, and I really think, and you know, it takes creati creativity to come up with a special nook at your home that would help you relax. So this, that's being creative. And then, of course, there's stitching or sewing. You know, if you have your sewing machine at home, you could go ahead and design your outfit or, you know, sew clothes for your friends, your family, your children. And this requires creativity as well. And, of course, there's cooking. Um, this takes a lot of creativity for some people. Um, writing, you can do this anytime. Um, the idea that writing is difficult, I think, is... Um, is strange in a way because when you do write um you don't really have to write for your audience um you write to begin with for yourself and that can be a wonderful outlet to release emotions you know just to pour out your thoughts and whatever it is that you want to pour out using the ink and the paper reorganizing um i've included this because um we have a lot of time in our hands and you have this space that you share with your family and reorganizing can take a lot of creativity as well. So you can begin by reorganizing your makeup, for example, or your closet or the way you, you know, you arrange your furniture. And I think that's being creative as well, creative as well when you do that. And then, of course, there's vlogging or blogging. 
So there are a lot of ways that um, you can engage into some sort of creative therapies. Um, you don't have to be expensive about it. You don't have to spend a lot. You can begin by using what you have um, at home, what you already have at home. So, and then on the next slide, okay. There you go. So how do creative arts therapies benefit health and well-being? So therapies share a commitment to the expressive action that engages emotions in a direct and physical way. So an ability to generate creative energy as a healing force for mind, body, and spirit, and a belief that the creative imagination can find its way throughout the most perplexing and complex problems and conflicts. So I really think that um, a lot of people have channeled their creativity during this pandemic. And I've seen a lot of friends doing that, you know, so they've embraced back um, their long lost passions, you know, and started to be creative once again. So um, this is something that has been helping me and that has been, and you know, these friends that has been helping my friends, um, because uh, during this pandemic, we really need to do something to help us, you know, tide, to help us go through the times, not just survive, but even have a better quality of life. So I think that's the end of my presentation. I have prepared some pictures of some of the works of ours that I did. Um, let me just see if this is working on the next slide. There you go. That's one of the pieces I did. So I have this idea of themes whenever I write, whenever I create a work of art. So this one, this is among the um, series entitled An Ode to the Divine Cosmos. So I have here the ocean scene. This is, by the way, a piece already owned by Miss Cherry Ann. <laughs> She's my um, very loyal client. All right. And on to the next slide. Um, I have here, I think, another piece again. So an ode to the divine cosmos again, purple blooms. So I use mainly acrylic and um, um, canvas. And But the rest of the other arts that I did, I used um, uh, stitching, another medium. And there you go. I, I was going to ask um, what <laughs> materials you use. Um, mm -hmm. So all of these are just acrylic, Cheryl. And, and maybe would you be able to share with us, you know, uh, some of your techniques when you're doing these artworks? I'm um, sure. Um, I have here, uh, that's flash on screen. Um, I have here that's done on acrylic canvas uh, using um, thread. Um, let me just go back there. The ones in blue and yellow and gray. Aha, uh -huh. fast forward. There you go. There. Okay. So uh, these I did with acrylic on canvas where using threads. So um, I use a combination of techniques. I use a combination of materials. Um, it depends on, you know, how I feel <laughs> during that time. So sometimes I need more engagement physically and mentally. So it's always nice. I love using my hands, by the way. So I'm not a traditional artist. I don't just use brushes. I use a lot of things. I use my hand. I use my mouth. I blow out paints using my mouth. I use the hair dryer, by the way. <laughs> I use tin foil. I use pants, you know? So, um, there's no limit to creativity. Um, and I remember, um, I know a, um, an artist, a legit artist here in Davao City. She told me that um, every art is le legit, you know? So you can just do anything to, you know, for the expression, for the mere um, satisfaction of expressing yourself. So you can use anything uh, that you have at hand. I love that. I love that, you know, you're very resourceful, um, it really keeps you busy and, and really engaged. And also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I think of Cheryl, when I think of you, I always think about yoga. I've known you, uh, you know, as a yoga teacher. And lately, I've seen a lot of your artwork, um, you know, the creativity um, that you have. I've, I've seen it um, on social media. And I'm very, very impressed with your, um, with your work, 
and <laughs> dili ba ko ay dili ba ka nang sana um dili ba obvious no kay I'm I'm always <laughs> uh, suki suki sa sa work ni Cheryl but um she, for somebody like me you know folks who are like me I don't consider myself very creative um what advice do you have on how we can tap into our creativity to relieve stress um begin with something that makes you curious so it's always a good place to start so for example if you're thinking about writing and you really want to know what goes on in the head of a writer or how do you make those words flow out seamlessly and smoothly from your mind the best start is for you to just take the pen and you know just write you know so um, I don't think anybody started doing anything with the thought that I am good at this. We are always works in progress. And until you get down to it and actually start doing it, you'll never know the extent of what you can do. So if you want to try something, just go for it. I mean, you know, it's part of the YOLO mentality that I've sort of learned from this younger generation. Like if you want to go for it, if, you're, if you think, you know, it's something worth your time, just give it a go. Don't don't question whether you can do it or not, because you will find out once you do it whether you can actually do it or not. So just get right down to it. I I think I found my inspiration. Um, I'm currently back in school, and one of our final requirements is to record ourselves and sing the um, you know the school hymn. And I don't do singing. Like I just don't have the DNA. It's just not in me. And, um, you know, you just said, just, you know, just go for it. Um, yes. I guess I'm go, go for it and then get it done with, you know. Um, <laughs> um, well, it was you know what, Marian? Um, sorry, yeah. you know what? There are a lot of online resources. That's the beauty of our age. You know, that's the beauty of the age that we're in right now. There are a lot of online tutorials that are free. So if you're interested in learning anything, absolutely anything, you can just Google it. And you know, the, the search results will direct you to resources that are absolutely free and very easy to follow. So I'm sure you'll find something for singing and such. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for our um, viewers, um, atong mga uh, SMEs, mga negosyante, I think this is another theme earlier, no? Na, kanang, there's a lot of free resources out there. If you're looking yes. for wellness programs, you want you want to put together your own wellness program. Just go to Google. Just go to mm -hmm. YouTube. There's a lot of free resources. So mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I'm gonna Google the whole singing thing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to <laughs> figure it out. Um, on on another note, Chet. Um, you know, right now, the pandemic has really brought in uncertainty to all of us. Um, many entrepreneurs, many business owners kind of put a hold on their, um, you know, on their ideas. Some of them are afraid to launch a new business. Some of them are afraid to start something new. On the mm -hmm. other hand, you, during this difficult time, you launch a new venture. You've launched BreatheWorks Davao, and I, I want to know what inspired you to launch this, um, you know, to launch BreatheWorks despite uh, the crisis that we're going through. Yes. Uh, when the pandemic happened, um, a lot of our fellow teachers here in Davao lost their jobs because the studios have to close down permanently, some of them. So um, we thought we could, you know, combine our resources together as teachers and create a space for students to where they could practice virtually. And also because we thought, you know, it will be a pity for the students to stop practicing right now where they need yoga the most. So um, we sort of saw an opportunity to create something out of the, uh, you know, out of a very dire situation. And so um, Breathworks was born. So um, it's not, um, we, we, we thought it will not click right away. And, in, and indeed, we're still growing. But we are happy to see results from our students that they're able to practice. And, you know, we, we ha we're happy to see feedback at how their practice has been helping them cope with the pandemic. 
So um, that was how Breathwork started. Very inspiring and very selfless, um, really putting others before yourself. So thank you for, for that. I, I know we also have some friends and some of our um, uh, fellow Marians you know, that are, are mm -hmm. attending your breathe work. So thank you for creating a platform where um, everybody can kind of release stress during this time. Um, talking about stress, um, you're not just an artist, you're not just a yoga teacher, you're also a mom of two. And yeah. um, <laughs> on top of that, you just moved back from mm -hmm. Bali. I think you've been in the field, back in the Philippines for two years, right? Mm -hmm. um, that also means your kids are still reacclimating and um, trying to really adjust and coming back in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Then the pandemic happens, right? Um, <laughs> I think you're in the same boat with a lot of parents out there and the gun guy, you got challenge and modules and, and, you know, it's an extra duty and an extra responsibility for, for moms and, and parents out there. So I, I guess uh, might be a little bit off topic, but I want to know what your advice is, what advice you have for parents who are getting stressed with the new normal for education. My best advice uh, for pe fellow moms or for fellow parents out there is that you allow your children to explore learning on their own. So um, I'm not a helicopter type of mom. I don't hover a lot over my kids. I let them do what they need to do. And I always respect what the teachers have to do for you know the, learn the whole learning process. So I step in when I need to, but in terms of completing the modules, the, assign the assignments and everything, I allow my kids to do it um, on their own, to do these things on their own. So I trust uh, that they will learn. Um, they will learn for themselves the mistakes, you know, they will develop techniques on learning and studying on their own. Um, and I really think that it's working for us because I'm happy to tell you that I'm not as stressed as <laughs> everybody else out there because you know the kids will come to me if they have questions like something that they can't solve and they're on their own of course i keep track of the tasks that they they did not complete and the tasks that they completed you know that's just the the minimal amount of monitoring that i do otherwise they do what they could at their own capacity because i recognize that the kids are intellectual beings so it's important that we emphasize that, that they are able to do these things on their own and you only have to empower them. So um, that's how we did it in the past and that's how I continue to do it even in this pandemic. So it's 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 a great so, relief. <laughs> so you're not going to be in the first honor, Mama Cheryl. No, no. <laughs> no, no, kidding, kidding aside. Kidding aside, I, I love the the advice. Um, you know, let the kids explore, and um, um, I, I think they can learn from their mistakes. If they make a mistake, they mm -hmm. learn from it, and, and that's part of real life, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. What I what I'd like to do because I think um, we're we we're past our allotted time. I want to bring in all of our um, speakers. Can we bring in everybody, please? Um, I'd like to bring in Dr. Mary Wapano, Miss Julie Ang, as well as um, is Mark. Uh, is Mark you still on? Hi, uh, yeah, but uh, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, be on audio because I'm in transit. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay. No worries. Um, do we have um, Dr. Uh, Mary Mapano? All right. So um, what I'd like to do before I give everybody that last question, we're going to have to do the famous or infamous groupie selfie like everybody does <laughs> no, during the, these webinars. So. Um, all right, awesome. There you go. Mark is on. Um, can we do a groupie in three? Okay, one, two, three, smile. 
Okay, I think that's it. Let me just double check if they got it. Um, can somebody just please con uh, confirm? All right, I, it looks like um, it looks like they were able to do uh, they were able to do it. So thank you again. The last question I have for for you guys is just this. Um, first and foremost, I want to ask um, Cheryl. Um, it's the same question for. Cheryl, as, as well as Miss Julie Ang, um, for brief works Dava, if they want to contact you no, and no, 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 let okay. know about your services, yeah. um, where can they find more information about your uh, your work and the services that you guys have, Cheryl? Um, they can find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We are also on Instagram, so they can just send us a message. Uh, the information that they need are right there um, on the page. Awesome. Thank you. Miss Julie Ang, how about for One Wellness CDO? How can they get a hold of you and, and, and uh, get to know more, uh, get more information? Okay, I... Uh... We have a studio in Cagayan and Dior, and we have also our Facebook. Uh, they can just, you know, write and look for us. One Yoga Wellness CDO. And then I'm also uh, a teacher of the Art of Living, so they can uh, check in Facebook, Art of Living Philippines. So, Got it. Awesome. And then... Um my question for Mark, Mark, when are you going to be back in CDO so that maybe we can show you around? <laughs> but no, kidding aside, Mark, um, I, I wanted to just maybe ask you, what is your go-to stress reliever? Because I know you're super busy and, um, you know, you are always there to support uh, the employees at, at your organization during this tough time. Yeah, it's a good question. I would say um, for me personally, it's uh, go to the gym to de-stress, uh, hang out with friends, and uh, yeah, um, and yeah, gardening. <laughs> there you go again. Going to the gym, doing some exercise, <laughs> and gardening. It's it's again, it's free. That's one of the themes for today. You know. So again, one last time, thank you so much to our speakers. We truly appreciate your time and the valuable uh, valuable input and insight that you've given our viewers. Um, salamat kaayu um, for helping us um, help the community bounce back. So um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks. All right. For our viewers out there, um, please remember that you can... Um, go back to our Facebook page if you didn't get to watch the, the, the start of this live video coverage. You can um, check us out, the recorded, uh, uh, the recorded version of the SME1 webinar. Go to our Facebook page. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. That way you get to see some of the promotions that we have. You get to see what are the cool things that's going on at Street Buy. And um, I just want to lastly give thanks to um, three different folks. One, um, our back-end team who are very supportive, who are always uh, making sure that our webinars are um, you know, making progress every every time we do this. Kathy from our marketing team, Mark, as well as Christelle. These are some of our leaders. Um, thank you so much for helping us. And we want to say thank you to our loyal customers. We want to say thank you to our merchants. Thank you for not only sa pagtangkilik sa Tatak Pilipino, Tatak Mindanawan product, street buy, but also being patient with us as we continue to improve our products and our services. Last but not the least, we want to say thank you to the community uh, for watching us. Stay tuned next month for another episode of SME1 uh, brought to you by Street Buy. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.